any device that allows a fluid to flow steadily through its control volume while undergoing a thermodynamics process can be classified as a steady state engineering device. In this nine minute lecture, the first of a series of three short lectures, we will learn about pipe flow, nozzles and diffusers, and throttling devices. If you want to learn about turbines, compressors and pumps, or about heat exchangers and mix and chambers, I will leave the links to the following two lectures of this thermal course down in the description below. Pipe flow or duct flow is a type of steady state engineering device where we have a mass flow coming in, a mass flow coming out, heat being transferred in or out, and some work being done to the system, for example electric work in the form of a heating coil or mechanical work in the form of a paddle wheel, or work being produced by the system. As demonstrated by our calculations in the previous 11 minute lecture on flow work, link below, the changes in kinetic energy are typically negligible, and as seen in one of the example videos for that lecture, also linked below, the changes in height, if any, are also usually negligible. Additionally, these pipes are ducts that usually just have one inlet and one outlet, which means that there's no summation for mass energy transfers, and if the system is at steady state, the change in energy over time is zero and also equal to the net heat transfer rate of the system minus the net work rate of the system plus the mass flow rate times the change in specific enthalpy. And that's pipe flow. Nozzles and diffusers are very commonly used in jet engines and rockets. Nozzles are duct type devices that have a much larger entrance area than the exit area. A hose nozzle is a simple example to easily understand that its main goal is to increase the velocity of the fluid at the exit. The water in your garden hose travels at a certain speed inside the hose and at the very end, towards the exit, in other words throughout the nozzle, the cross-section area decreases making the fluid speed rise considerably. With a typical control volume around this device, and noticing that the inlet velocity is going to be much smaller than the velocity at the exit, we can understand that we should probably never neglect the kinetic energy changes during our conservation of energy analysis. Usually, for both nozzles and diffusers, we don't add any heat or perform any work, which means that we don't have the Q dot or the W dot terms. And even though a change in temperature typically exists, it's usually very small, which means that depending on the magnitude of the temperature change, we sometimes don't need to consider the enthalpy changes. We'll leave them there for now, but just remember that in some cases, it might be okay to neglect the enthalpy terms. And of course, there's no considerable change in height. This equation and assumptions are also true for diffusers, where all we're doing to the fluid is the complete opposite of a nozzle. Small inlet area moving to a large exit area to decrease fluid velocity, as long as it's not a supersonic fluid. And that's nozzles and diffusers. Throttling devices decrease the pressure of our traveling fluid. It's typically used to bring a mixture of liquid and vapor to a vapor-only phase. It consists of a porous barrier that allows the fluid to flow, but of course this causes the pressure to drop. There is usually no heat transfer rate, no work rate, a change in velocity does exist, but just like the constant area duct, it's very small so we can neglect the kinetic energy change, and the change in potential energy is zero. The remainder of this equation is telling us that the enthalpy at the inlet is equal to the enthalpy at the exit. And since enthalpy is internal energy plus PV, we use this expression, in combination with any knowledge we might have about the fluid, to solve for either pressure, specific volume, or specific internal energy. Usually, if the pressure at the inlet is higher than the pressure at the exit, it means that the temperature at the inlet is also higher than the temperature at the exit which in turn means that the internal energy at the inlet is higher than at the exit. However, for an ideal gas, since enthalpy is only a function of temperature, and remember this from previous lectures or just your ideal gas tables where we only need to know the temperature to find enthalpy values, it means that Ti and Te are the same, and therefore Ui and Ue are the same. And this makes sense for constant temperature in ideal gases. And that's throttling devices. Turbines, compressors and pumps will be covered in the next lecture video, link below, and right after that one we'll go over heat exchangers and mix in chambers, also linked below. For now, let's look at a throttling example where we make use of what we learned today, and if you want to see more difficult examples on pipe ducts, nozzles, diffusers and throttling devices, 
make sure to check out the example links in the description of this video. At 200 degrees Celsius and 1.8 megapascals, liquid water is throttled into a flash evaporator chamber at 450 kilopascals. What is the quality of the liquid vapor mixture coming into the evaporator chamber? As usual, pause here and try to solve this problem yourself. We don't really need to know what a flash evaporator chamber means here. All we know is that water is coming into a throttling device at 200 degrees Celsius and 1.8 megapascals and exits that device at 450 kilopascals. From what we just learned, we know that in throttling devices, the specific enthalpy at the inlet is the same as the specific enthalpy at the exit. If we have two properties at the inlet, like in this case, we can figure out what the specific enthalpy is. And since the enthalpy at the exit is assumed to be the same, we can use that information and at least one property at the exit, in this case the pressure, to fully describe the properties and therefore the state of the water at the exit. So let's find the specific enthalpy at the inlet first. Since we have liquid water at the inlet, we could go to the compressed liquid tables and find the enthalpy for the given pressure and temperature values. But if you remember what we learned in the compressed liquid 6 minute lecture, linked below, we concluded that we can approximate compressed properties as the saturated liquid properties. Check that lecture video again if you don't remember this. This is actually kind of like our only option here, since the compressed liquid tables won't have the info we need for such a relatively low pressure. So to find HI, we go to the saturated water tables, the temperature version, and write down the saturated liquid enthalpy HF for 200 degrees Celsius as the value for HI. And since this is a throttling device, where the inlet enthalpy is assumed to be the same as the exit enthalpy, HE is also equal to HI. At the exit, we know that our pressure is 450 kilopascals. And since we know we're looking for the quality, meaning that we know that our water is in a liquid vapor mix, we can go to our saturated water tables, this time the pressure version, and look up 450 kilopascals to write down the values for HF and HG. We're looking for these values because these are what we need to find the quality of our mixture. Notice that the question to this problem could have been fully describe the state of water at the exit of the throttling device, without telling us that it was in a saturated liquid vapor state. In this case, we were already told that the water at the exit is in a saturated liquid vapor state and we're being asked to find the quality only. But even if we hadn't been told that, we could have figured out that the water is in fact in a saturated mixture state because we see that the exit enthalpy value is indeed found between the enthalpy of a saturated liquid HF and that of a saturated vapor HG. Now going back to this expression we derived for quality during the interpolating and quality derivation 9 minute lecture, link below, we substitute the values we just found to find that the quality of our mixture after leaving the throttling device is 10.81%. This is effectively the fraction of vapor in the mixture and of course 1 minus this value is the fraction of liquid. If you want to check out other more complex examples, including examples for pipe flow, nozzles and diffusers, make sure to check out the links in the description below. You'll find the links to the other lectures of the thermo course as well as the links to other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.